Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to just give you a basic overview of some of the technologies you need to know if you want to tackle the UiPath Associate Exam. Now, my buddy Serge is running a site called UiPath.RPACertified.com. Lots of great stuff over here. There's a bunch of practice tests, and there's even a UiPath study guide. But one of the links up here is the exam objectives. And if you want to pass ex this exam, you need to go over these objectives and be able to hammer out all of them. You notice one of the fundamental objectives, and you end up getting three or four questions on this particular topic. So knowing this is the difference between passing and failing the exam is the functionality of products like Studio, Robots, and Orchestrator. So what I wanna do now is take you through these different products, show you what you need to know about these tools and about the depth of the exam, how to create things in Studio, how to create a process in Orchestrator, and how to configure robots is gonna be the focus here. If you're competent with these functions, you're gonna pass the UiPath certification exam. So robots follow a set of standard steps. And if you want to run a robot, you got to tell it what steps to do. And the way you do that is you use an IDE. Here is UiPath Studio. And I'm just going to create a basic hello world basic project. And just kind of demonstrate the idea that, you know, if you want to actually run a robot, it actually needs a set of instructions to run. And so this is a, they call this a low code environment where you can kind of do some drag and drop programming. So for example, if I just wanted to send a message to the user or send a message on the console, I could just drag this message box over here and type in hello world, save it, ask it to run, and then you would get a little hello world message. Okay, now this is not the most complicated robot in the world, I will admit. I just want to show you that, you know, what the steps are to say, take this robot. And of course, you know, you might have something that does AI or character recognition or something like that. Um, go for it. Build a robot that does all of those things, a program that does all of those things. But I'm going to take this program and I'm going to push it up to UiPath Orchestrator and then create a robot that will actually run this. So here I am in UiPath Orchestrator. This is UiPath's cloud-based environment for managing your robot. You see cloud.uipath.com. And notice there's a section here to create a robot. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click this button here and create a standard robot. And it's going to say, well, what machine do you want this robot to run on? And I guess I'll have to open up the command window and figure out what my host name is. And my host name is ThinkStation, so I'm going to create a machine called ThinkStation. Now remember, this is up in the cloud, but when you actually run your robots, your robots are running on actual machines. So I've got to link the cloud to the actual physical computer on which the robot's going to run. I'll ask it to provision that, that ThinkStation. I'll call this the Insights robot, because I think Insights are good. And I'm going to make this, now this is going to be a fully unattended robot. So there's attended robots, those are ones where maybe a human has to kick them off. Or maybe there's input that they require from a human as they run. This one's going to be fully unattended, right? This will run from start to finish. Those are the best ones to create because there's no human intervention. So that's going to be an unattended robot. Now again, it asks for my domain and username. With an unattended robot, it'll actually find your computer on the network, the computer it's associated with, and log into it, and then run the process on that computer. Again, this doesn't run in the cloud. And so part of the configuration is you have to tell the computer what your domain name is and what username will be used to log into the computer to run the process. I've got an account called Visitor on a computer called ThinkStation. And I'm not going to tell you what my password is, but I had to type my password in because it's going to physically log into the computer. There's settings here, but I don't think uh, I need to override any of these. I'll click the create button and then that creates a, a basic robot. And after you create a robot, you're supposed to create an environment here. I'll call it the insights environment. And when you create an environment, you're supposed to associate a robot with an environment. So you could have an environment that has multiple robots associated with it, multiple robots could run, you know, manage processes, run them in parallel, those types of things. But you know, at the start, really you just need to know 
that when you create a robot, you need to associate that machine and that robot with an environment in order for it to run. So there you go, I've got my insights in environment and I've got my robot created and I've also got in this process a machine created as well. So that was done automatically for me uh, when I created the robot. But there's also a component in here that's gonna link my local machine to the computer in the cloud. Now, as I mentioned, you have to link the configuration of your local machine that's configured up in the cloud here in cloud.uipath.com and orchestrator to your local physical machine. And there's a program called UiPath Assistant that's used to actually con con connect from your local machine to the server. So if I go over here and look at the orchestrator settings, you'll notice that it says that my local machine is offline. It's not connected to a machine configured in the cloud. So if I go over here to tenants, you'll see that that, click on machines, you'll see that that ThinkStation machine that I configured when I created my robot, that's listed right here. And it's got this machine key associated with it. So I'm just gonna copy that machine key. And then I go over to UiPath settings and I paste that machine key in. I also need this URL, at least the first section here, the name of the tenant, the name of the user, then cloud.uipath.com. And I paste that in as the orchestrator URL and I should be able to connect. And now this is gonna link my local machine to the UiPath orchestrator environment in the cloud. And so with this link, when I do something to this ThinkStation here, like run a robot on it, what actually happens is UiPath Assistant gets the message that says, hey, run this process, run this executable, run these steps, and it runs it. Now, what are the steps to run? Well, that's all the stuff that I created in UiPath Studio. So right now, I've only got this code on my local machine. I need to publish it and push it up to UiPath Orchestrator. And so I just hit the publish command, I click publish, it says it was published successfully. And what that means is it means it was actually published up to UiPath Orchestrator. And if I click on packages now, you notice, yeah, there's the basic Hello World project I just created a moment ago and it was published. And so now all of that code is up there on the server, UiPath Orchestrator. It's got a robot, it's got a link to my machine. It's got through this package here, through this program, all of the steps that the robot's supposed to execute. Now I know it's just a little hello world message, but I mean, it could be as complicated as your programming skills allow it to be. And then the next thing I need to do is I actually just need to create a process that associates the script with the robot and the machine. And then when I run the process, all of these things run, execute on the machine that's been configured. So to create a new process, I just move to this default folder here. And once I'm in the default folder, I can go over here to automations and you'll see there's a list for processes. None have been configured. I wanna link my robot and the environment to this project that I just published, right? So when you create a process, it says, well, what are the steps you wanna run? That's the project that I just uploaded. What's the name? I'll call it my insights process. What environment is it associated with? And remember that environment is associated with my robot. So this environment allows this process to be run on that robot. Let me see if there's any other settings that need to be set here. No, it looks good. And then I'll click create. And now I've got all of the key pieces linked together through the process. It's got a link to the machine on which the process runs. It's got a link to the actual code, which are the steps that should execute. It's got a link to the robot and the environment, which is actually gonna run the process. And so this process links everything together. And when I click play here, it says, what robot do you wanna run it on? I'll run it on the robot that I created. I'll click start. And notice hello world comes up. And that executable is actually running on my computer. It's not running in the cloud. This is not a window that Internet Explorer or Chrome just popped up. That's actually a program running on my local machine, on my computer. So from the cloud, I've actually told a robot to go onto my local machine, log in if necessary, because I provided the credentials, and run a script. Now in this case, it's just hello world. But as I said, it could be as complicated as you want. And there you go. That's how UiPath and RPA tools work. And there you go, that's a good overview of the key technologies that are gonna be used on this UiPath certification exam. 
Now, if you are serious about passing, I can't emphasize enough, head over to my buddy's site. There's Surge right down there, uipath.rpacertified.com. Look at the study guide, follow this, concentrate on the objectives, make sure that you're hammering out all of the different objectives here and that all of these get covered. And finally, there are a bunch of practice tests here, which will simulate the difficulty that you're gonna get on the UiPath associate exam. So take these mock exams, take these practice tests, and keep hammering away until you're good at them. And then when you can score 80, 90% on all the exams, you're ready and you're gonna pass that UiPath associate exam.